You didn't realize it. You just did a play show preference. Uh, do you have any uh, updated industry news for us, John? Tay updates? No. Uh, she just posted more tour dates. Um, Vancouver, <laughs> Canada. I've signed up for those. Uh, due to some live circumstances, I will be attending another show. Um, so, yeah, that's updates on that. Oh, I got the uh, I got all the versions of the 1989 Taylor's version album and all the colors of the vinyl and all the CDs. This came in yesterday. Industry Can we talk about, can we talk about guns now. <laughs> the fact that you're wearing the Jeffrey Dahmer glasses and talking about like your infatuation with Taylor Swift makes it even more creepy. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with it. I am. I'm fine. Did you smoke any weed today, John? Yeah, we're just over here. <laughs> Getting getting high before we podcast. Says some commenters seem to think. We're just high on life, guys. I guess like it just bothers people if you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you gotta be high. Yeah. Probably. Uh industry updates. No, uh ammo's freaking crazy. Um everyone I talk to, particularly five five six two twenty three, is just flying off the shelves. I'm kind of worried about it a little bit. We just ordered more. We had to go run across Texas to go pick up a load of nine mil because we ran out last minute again. Um, so yeah, I mean, we were burning through hundred thousand rounds or so a month. It seems like sweet. But yeah, past that, I mean, everyone's very anticipatory of the next year. It seems as as such. Uh, the world's gone pot, John. Yeah. Well, it's also Christmas. I think a bunch of. <laughs> We've definitely seen six arc sales pick up uh, with the rifles uh, more yeah. than anything. Those Smith and Wesson's uh, volunteers have been moving. A lot more people buying ammo, kind of getting into the season. Um, seven PRC sales picking up. Uh, I think a lot of people want to try out some new stuff. But, I'll be we'll be doing a coverage of seven PRC very soon. I got to finally got some more rifles in to get some preliminary testing done. With just factory ammo starting off, uh, it'd probably be next season before we release our our take on some PRC. But uh, that is not today's topic, though. Today's topic is um, a question that from our twenty two arc video. The question that just arose several multiple times, and I got tons of message about, is what's the difference between six arc six creed. And uh, the answer is one big, one is big and one is small. Small boy. See you guys next time. <laughs> Before we get into it, uh, be sure and go check out allyammunitions dot com, or if you're milling, go buy Ally Outdoors. Help support podcasts. Uh, we do have lots of hoodies in stock, lots of new stuff on the website and in the store. There's like our our big Sitka restock, lots of hoodies there as well, lots of guns, ammo, like all the fixings. Just lots and lots of stuff. So go check it out. Six Arc versus Six Creed. Why is Hornady putting out new cartridges when they can't even support the ones they just put out? I can't even find Six Arc at my local gun store. Well, are you in luck? We have Six Arc on the website and in the store. And Six Creed. It's crazy. Which I haven't put any Six Creed on the website yet. Sorry. Trying. Uh, I, you know. I think where people get twerked off on this is one, they probably shoot legacy cartridges and they don't understand new stuff and how great it is and everything else. But two, like go do some research. It's pretty easy to figure out, but I've, I've, I've compiled a list of relevant information, if you will, I guess. Uh, but I think, you know, the thing, um, the, everything I'm going to be doing in this podcast, I'm basing it off of just Hornady's match grade ammo, which is literally a 108 grain EOD match in six arc, and it's a 108 grain EOD match in six creed. Because it was just, it's easier just to go off of that, like instead of like, because I can load certain things, like I could, I could take a factory offering of Hornady, run it through a semi auto whatever barrel length and then i could take my hand loads and run through a six arc bow gun and actually outperform it with a little bit longer barrel and hand loads but to keep it as fair as possible keep it as easy as possible i just went off of like horny factory stuff you know 
So, so <clears throat> right off the bat, let's talk about you know their box printed velocities for the six grade and six arc. And the, again, the one hundred eight grain EOD M, which is the EOD M match. Both of them are based on twenty four inch barrels, which you don't find very often in six arc, which I think is hilarious. But anyways. According to the box, six creed, one away grain is twenty nine fifty feet per second, which is pretty salty. On the box of six arc, twenty four inch barrel, twenty seven fifty. Now I'm no mathematician, John, <laughs> but that seems like it's a two hundred feet per second difference. Checking the math in my head, that works out. <laughs> But you know, like I said, it's it's uh obviously the six creed is a larger cartridge case. And while whilst we're on that, let's talk about uh action length and bolt face. So the six creed is your standard uh I always forget this number, so I wrote it down. 0.473 bolt face, which is a 308 bolt face. Short action, 308 bolt face. That's six creed. Whereas the 6 arc is that PPC bolt face, which is like a .445 or .440 plus or minus. Like You can get on Google and look up bolt face sizes if you want a better understanding of how this like this lays out. But .473 is like the, and it's always plus or minus, is like the generic known bolt face size for 308 based cartridges. So 6.5 Creed, 6 Creed, 308, 243. 22 to 50, 22 creed, like all those cartridges have a 308 or 0.473 bolt face. And it is a short action caliber. Whereas the 6 arc is that type type 2, 0.440 plus or minus bolt face, which te- it depends on where you look and where you measure and everything else. Technically, it's like 0.445, or it's also known as the PPC bolt face. They just stole it. <laughs> Only you make it, they just stole it. Which is also six five Grendel, six arc, uh gonna be twenty two arc, uh six PPC, and some other six millimeter variants, and it's still a short action caliber. Now, where we are past diverge is in the semi auto platforms. Six millimeter arc is a AR fifteen platform. Whereas six millimeter Creed, if you were to run it in an AR-10, it'd be AR-10 platform. Those are noticeable differences in the size of the platform as well as mag length capacity. Now, in an AR-15 magazine, most of the time, you're looking at an overall length capacity of 2.260. Plus or minus because different mags, thickness on the walls, like you can fudge it here and there, but... Generically speaking, 2.260 overall length of the cartridge on the 6mm arc. Whereas, uh, AR-10P mags, which is the LRSR, the Magpul, you're looking at about 2.8. And that's going to, again, <laughs> depending on which AR-10 platform, which magazine you're running, that's going to be plus or minus. So you're looking at a pretty sizable difference on overall length of cartridge. 2.260 versus 2.8. And again, six millimeter arc is an AR-15 platform. Six Creed is an AR-10 platform. Noticeable difference in sizes. In fact, the six millimeter arc was developed to be ran in an AR-15 platform at an 18 inch length barrel. It, what was it, John? Like because it can get the 18 inch six arc could beat. The performance of a 16 inch 308 and be the same length is that what it was something like that yeah i don't remember now like go back to our go back to our one of our many but the main six arc podcast we like get into that john gives us some history on the cartridge and everything else but you're talking essentially what we're getting up to two majorly different beasts here and a difference of about 200 feet per second now i'm gonna say about because again you could hand load, increase the performance on one or the other, everything else. But that's kind of like the layout. Like you're looking at around 200 feet per second, more velocity out of six screen, much smaller, lighter platform out of the six arc. 
Now, ballistically speaking, we'll get to that in a minute. That's where you're going to be like, what? Because <laughs> it's, again, that's just looking at ballistics profiles. Like, I'd have to really deep dive this and get some 24-inch barrel rifles to really see just how accurate their velocities are. Usually, they're pretty good. Like, they're pretty close. This is going to be good enough for this podcast. Now, as I said, Six Arc was originally developed for a semi-auto platform. Now, where it really shines is out of a bolt gun, especially when you start talking about the the weight difference and everything else. But if you don't want to get into hand loading and all that other kind of stuff, and you're just going to be deer hunting and everything else, Six Creed might be a better choice for you. But let's talk about barrel life because there are some substantial differences in barrel life between these two cartridges. Uh, six Creed, you're going to be looking around 1500 rounds. Now it's going to be around in plus or minus because it depends on how hard you run them and everything else, but it's pretty well known. Like 1500 is about the general number. Like, and that's probably going to last most hunters a lifetime. You know, that's just like, if you're just going to be deer hunting, it doesn't matter. If you're going to be PRS shooting, it does matter because the barrel life on the six arc is up there. I've heard anywhere from 3,500 to 4,500 to almost 5,000. And as it pertains to barrel life, I think we've done podcasts about this before. It all depends on how you treat it and how you take care of it. If you don't treat it good and you don't take care of it, obviously barrel lifes are going to decrease. But as a whole, your six arc is going to have a much longer barrel life. It's just that simple. But again, if you're just deer hunting, and for some coyote hunters who may shoot like 10 cows a year, either one's going to last you a long time. And for myself, barrels are expendables. Uh, I don't care. You know, I, I don't I don't really like the super crazy barrel burners. We're talking like 500 to 800 rounds. You know, some of the, the wild cats, hot rod wild cats, like the 6 millimeter PRC and a bolt gun run screaming velocities. That's not really my 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 go there like the, you're talking about you might as well spin up two barrels every time and have some sort of a quick barrel change system neither one of these are that i've got i've got one six creed it's actually the uh, co-pilot from gunworks it's probably got around 3500 rounds down and it's still shooting one one moa group now as soon as it opens up a little bit more i'm probably going to go ahead and send it off to be rebarreled but i've also taken really good care of it and uh, you know it's actually has degraded from like, you know, quarter MOA all the way up to MOA. And I am sitting my bullets out to complete mag length capacity. Like it's gotten that bad. Like that means the, the throat's eating up and everything else. But it's all in how you treat them and everything else. Uh, it, you know, so from a reloading perspective, this equates to about 10 grains of powder difference between the two of them. Meaning, you know, on average, you're going to be around 40 grains of powder in six creed. You're going to be around 30 grains minus on the six arc. And I say about because it totally depends on what projectile, what powder you're using. But, the, you know, it's around 10 grains of powder. Now, from someone like myself who shoots a lot, from that perspective, like you start looking at all these things, I, our, our, our cost of the projectiles baked in, it doesn't matter. It's the same one. You can run the same ones. So you're not saving any money there. Powder, 10 grains of powder. When you shoot a bunch, that 10 grains makes a difference. I promise you. And when you start looking at brass, typically speaking, typically, and I say typically because of it's going to be very much driven on popularity, I'm sure. Typically speaking, when you take a smaller cartridge case, it's cheaper than a larger cartridge case. So there could be some savings there, but Right now, I probably wouldn't be looking for a whole lot if you go apples to apples just because of popularity and everything else. But it is what it is. You're still going to save money on the actual powder. And when you start, that 10 grains adds up, you know, especially at the cost of powder nowadays. And then, you know, obviously, most of the time, six arc is going to be a small rifle primer. Most of the time, six creed is going to be a large rifle primer, which nowadays there are small rifle primers, six creed brass, but most of the time like if you're just buying 
I'm going to buy a bunch of hoardy ammo to break in my barrel, and then I'm going to reload that. It's going to be a small rifle versus a large rifle. It's really that simple. And I'm not going to get into, like, small rifle, six grade brass. I don't, I don't really care. So, am I covering this too fast? Putting out too much, like, complicated information? And I'm going to touch back on this here in a minute, but, like, typically speaking... The uh, rifles are probably going to weigh about the same as it pertains to bolt action rifles. Like you're still working with a short action, short action. There's one exception to this, and that's how is mini action. But we're just going to keep this apples to apples as much as possible. 24 inch barrel, short action. 24 inch barrel, short action. Literally in the rifles themselves, the only difference is going to be the bow face diameter, which I explained earlier. You're talking about. No difference in weight, essentially. An argument could be had. <laughs> Bolt face diamond alone, you're going to save like one ounce. <laughs> but in a bolt action platform, they're going to weigh, if you built the same rifle, they're going to weigh the same until you load the cartridges. And we'll get into that. Well, I'll go ahead and just talk about it now. So, obviously, there's a 10 grains of difference in powder alone. On average, and again, I'm saying on average because it's plus or minus depending on powder and their projectiles and everything else, but talking apples to apples, about 10 grains worth of difference on powder alone. And then you start, you need to look at the the brass. You're going to save a little bit of weight on the brass, a few ounces, I'm sure. Because one, remember, the cartridge overall length, thereabouts around 2.8 on the sixth grade. Thereabouts around 2.260 on the six arc. So you're going to save some money. You're going to save some weight on brass. And you're going to save some weight on powder. Now, once you load a, say, a 10 round magazine, load both rifles, 10 rounds, 10 grains per, you know, per round, you're going to be, I don't know. I can't do that kind of math off the top of my head. It's what, 100 grains of powder alone. And then the brass. You know, you're going to be minus a couple grains per round. Is it going to be enough to matter? No, but for those like ultralight hunters, probably going to probably going to matter. But at the same time, most of those ultralight hunters probably not going to be shooting six arc because they, you know, they don't normally trust new cartridges. That's, a, you know, different subject for a different day. Like if I know if I was going up into the mountains to shoot some sort of goat and I'm, I know I'm going to have to get within a couple hundred yards, I'd take a little mini action six six art not just me though it if weight cutting as much as weight as possible is you know is at the forefront then yes you can definitely trim some weight out of the ammo and that was another selling point for the six arc the army if i recall correctly is the the nice reduction in weight over well, yeah, that ammos. was yeah especially when you're like a full combat load compared to a you know 308 yeah, it's a uh, significant recoil reduction and weight reduction. I, I don't know. I did all the math, and then I lost that page. <laughs> I actually wrote it down what the weight savings would be. Uh, but let's just going to say on that ammo alone, you're going to be at least 10% lighter. How about that? I'm just off the top of my head. Yeah, this guy. Oh, boy. <laughs> you see how much he's leaned into that? Yes. So. I think Paul, we're going to. Imagine if we live streamed our ranges online. Might have something there. Like allies just on Twitch. Just just put it into their waiver that sign, like at the very bottom. You might have something there. But no, but but you're there's there's another facet of this that would be amazing is uh like you have one at the range counter and you have one at the retail counter too. And so you just have the world monitor your employees for you. Because <laughs> like, yeah, they exactly. just like, fucked off. Yeah. <laughs> they just go look for it in chat. Yeah. <laughs> you might have something there. Like a reality show. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> I just, I know I was scrolling through the things and this guy was like, but you can see it clear from the back. He was just like leaned the fuck into it. Man. Oh, I've watched him before. I'm just, every time I've l- watched someone, though, it's just fucking the most awful shooter in the world. Yeah. You attack me. 
Dear God, look at that fucking stance. It's awful. That's a good way to, uh, I don't know, shoot to the right every time. Well, I've been trying to keep an eye on the range in particular just for, uh, like, traffic-wise. Because that 100 yard just gets murdered. Murdered. Say that. There's fucking nobody in there. There's yeah, one guy in there. Oh, it's fucking hunting season. So, let's move on. Wait, are we still recording? Yeah, yeah, we are. Let's move on to the... Wade reacts. Somebody's signing in their rifle. <laughs> oh, they wouldn't want that. would start running off customers. <laughs> uh, so, let's move on to like my favorite part, which is the ballistics portion of this. Now, again, this is taking off Hornady's velocities and everything else. Keep it fair. Apples to apples as possible. And uh, I used uh, Strelock Pro or Sterilock Pro. However the hell you say it. That's why I use... Sterilock Pro is what I use for, like, to... Because it's so extensive, that's what I use to pull up like any kind of extensive ballistic studies, and then I will go test them and see how right they are because that's a great app. But anyways, ballistics when you when you push in their velocity and everything else, and we're talking about it again. This is based off twenty four inch barreled six millimeter arc and six grain. There was essentially one inch of difference out to five hundred yards. Well. Up to 500 yards, meaning one inch of difference, like 200. That's why I keep telling people like, and this is also a strong case for the 22 arc being better than 2250. That triggered a lot of people, by the way. Nothing's going to kill my 2250. My 2250 been around a long time. It's going to keep on being I mean, because of people like that, it probably won't. Yeah. But this is like, this is a strong case for the 22 arc and everything else. And I can't wait till we have one to do like do real data and everything else. But anyways, there's literally 200 feet per second difference in the ammo. 200 feet per second, zero to 400. There's one inch of difference at 400, 400 yards. 200 feet per second gets you one inch, one inch of difference. Ten grains of powder, <laughs> on average, gets you one inch better. Hell yeah. That's why modern cartridges, modern projectiles are so great. Also, you think about it in its perspective. 200 feet per second gets me one inch at 400 yards. Like my six creed is shooting one inch higher at 400 yards than my six arc. It costs me 10 more grains of powder to do this. One inch. And my barrel life is less than less than half in a six creed. Do I need to repeat that? <laughs> nah, but the barrel burning some bitch at twenty two arc. <laughs> oh, every, yeah. that was my favorite. It's like probably not. It's probably not gonna be as good as a six arc, but it's gonna be up there close to it. I mean, there's people like running the there's the, the PRS shooters who love the Valkyrie for like more more or less playing around because they figured out like if you run the right twist and just run it full throttle it's actually pretty good performance on a super long barrel prs rig yeah they're running them bitches like five thousand rounds for they change barrels that's what they like them so much but anyways once again just reiterate 200 feet per second gets you one one last inch as far as like from a varmint hunting standpoint if you're running bolt guns and like you worked up some spicy loads for both of them and everything else, like where it could get interesting is like those longer barrels, but that's a different subject for a different day. But again, this is based off their data and everything else, like one inch. Now where it starts to, when there's six creeds, extra 200 feet per second velocity starts to overtake it. We jump to 500 yards. It jumps to six inches of difference. That's where to me, that's where I'm going to start really paying attention to the six grade, especially if we're building bolt action platforms. Six inches starting to get it, you know, a little bit. Uh, six inches is a lot. <laughs> I knew you was going to do that. <laughs> when I wrote it down, I knew you was going to do that. Six inches start getting like, okay. Now, I didn't even pull up wind drift, and I'm sure people are going to bitch and complain, but I don't, I don't care. Uh, but like I said, that's that's down to 500 yards. So if you're one of those deer hunters 
sitting in a deer stand, the longest shot you might ever do is like 200 yards and everything else. I'm still going to tell you like six arcs, fine. Six arcs, great. Six arc, six arc should be the newest, latest, greatest cartridge for any youth deer hunter. 100%. Yeah. Uh, the, the reduction recoil, I tried to find some stats and I didn't find anything I really liked. But 10 grains less of powder, that's a pretty substantial reduction in recoil, I promise you. Well, it comes down to the, like, obviously the new mentality with these horny cartridges is typically a combination of efficiency and form factors. They make a, like, you're getting way more bang for your buck on the bullet, and then you're getting it in a more flexible form factor, so ARs, Mm -hmm. you know, bolt actions, what have you. Um, It seems like, I mean, let's be honest, most people would stand to benefit from significantly less recoil. Yep. Um, Yep, and it's, again, going back to that youth cartridge scenario, a youth cartridge scenario, like it's going to be a substantial reduction in recoil, especially if you go down to a little bit lighter projectile, but like a ninety-five grainer. But ten grains less powder, that's less boom. Then let me just simplify it for you. And if you built a AR fifteen platform, telescoping stock is a great thing. As it pertains to having a rifle that you, the adult, can go have fun with. Shoot long range, shoot pigs, shoot coyotes, shoot deer yourself. Oh, it's it's my time for my son or daughter to shoot. Let me just telescope the stock, that. Telescope the stock in to give them a proper length of pull. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Instead of that, like, I, I cannot, st- and I get it. 100% get it. Like, I'm, I'm not bashing on anyone like if you can't afford more than one rifle and that's just what you have then that so be it but if i can only afford one rifle in today's market and i'm searching for something that's going to work for me and my kids as a deer hunting round round it's going to be an ar-15 six art we'll get into barrel links later but go watch some of the other six, five million six art videos we've done that's going to be my choice and you know it's america's rifle <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyways Let's talk about the the other important thing people are going to be asking about. That is energy. Uh, before I go on energy, I will I will quickly talk about wind drift. It's going to be less with a six creed. It's that simple. Uh, it's going faster. That two hundred feet per second faster is probably going to be a more more beneficial as it pertains to wind drift. Now I didn't write down the numbers because. Most people ain't even really thinking about that 400 yards in. I suppose I should have, but it's going to be less. 200 feet per per second faster equates to less time in the air. Equates to less time for the wind to affect the projectile. Now, how much? I don't know. Uh, Go go run your own ballistic solver and figure it out. It's going to be less. It's going to be sixth grade is going to be less effective because it's going faster. If you care about that. Now, Energy, 500 yards. Six Creed, 1,158 foot-pounds. More than adequate for killing whitetail. More, I, I mean, I've seen me do it. <laughs> Six Arc, 984 foot-pounds. More than adequate for killing whitetail, especially a Texas whitetail. Now, spare me the bullshit in the comments. I don't care. Uh, I really don't care about energy because it's so... it's it's. It's a numerical thing based off math. It takes nothing into account the how the projectile is manufactured and how it performs. I care about velocities. That's we'll get into that in a different podcast. Uh, but for those that do care, you know, I got a five hundred grain broadhead going. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> go whatever. To three four hundred feet per second. Did you actually watch that Rogan thing with the truck? Yes, he was convinced. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, and I'm, it was hilarious. It wouldn't like it didn't even act like it was going to do anything. <laughs> Just bing, shattered the fucking brought in. Uh, that's a difference of one hundred and seventy four foot pounds for you, those that care. Substantial enough. Is it enough? I don't know. So that's for you to decide. <laughs> Let's get to uh, ammo availability. There, there are going to be quite a few six creed offerings, but it seems very, seems very spotty who has it, who doesn't. 
Like, if you go to small towns, you're probably not going to see either one of these. If you go to Alley Outdoors in Midland, Texas, Hi-oh! you're going to see a lot of bow. Yeah, you're going to see Six Creed and Six Arc. Or the website, you're going to see Six Arc right now. Uh, give me a minute. I'll get the Six Creed on. I will say during the pandemic, Six Creed was pretty available. For, for a moment. Yeah. And then everybody started buying them sons of bitches. I, I'm convinced got, those people just didn't read the box and they thought it was Six Five. <laughs> no, I pushed a lot. Uh, when 243 was unavailable, I pushed a lot of people towards Six Creed because there was so much ammo available. And then all of a sudden, we weren't able to get materials because there were so many people that jumped into Six Creed. It, it's a great cartridge. This isn't a a video to squash down Six Creed by any means. Uh, I still, like, I have tons of them. I've killed lots of white tail and coyotes with them uh, and pigs. Uh, you know, ammo availability, though. I, I'm going to always push you to, one, check your favorite websites. Hopefully, Ally Munitions is one of them. <laughs> Two, check your local stores. And then talk to your local store owners. Hey, is this something you can get if I get one? And, you know, go look and see what's available. Talk to the people that are actually running the store or whatever, doing the ordering. See if they can get certain things before you, like, they may be able to only source out six cream. They may be able to only source out six arc. They may be able to source both of them. Go out and do a little bit of legwork for you make a purchase. It's really that simple. I will say this. Horny does make an 87 grain V Max for the six Creed. It's pr- usually pretty readily available. We make a few offerings. We haven't had any because I've been waiting on brass forever, which is finally shipping. Six Arc doesn't have nothing yet. Now they're they're coming out with a new offering, which is an 80 grain, their newest bullet. And it'll be available for the Six Arc and the Six Creed. So and Ally Munitions will be dropping Six Arc Varmint ammo very soon. There's a few other companies out there doing some Six Arc Varmint stuff. Depends on what you're doing, use case, ammo availability, whatever. Speaking of use case, that's my very next thing, which is use case. What are you doing with the rifle? What do you intend on doing with the rifle? It's going to help you make your selection between the two, six arc or six creep. And barrel length. Barrel length, barrel length, barrel length. Because, I don't know how to navigate this use case. Going back to like, if I'm just buying one rifle platform, I'm going to shoot pigs, coats, deer and i live in a great state of texas where i can buy base almost whatever i want almost with the exception of a few things and i can use an ar to hunt with and everything else uh i'm probably gonna lean towards the six r especially if i have that situation where my kids might be shooting in it's way easier and cheaper to get into a six r that way versus a bolt action something with an adjustable stock uh if i'm gonna be shooting Lots of pigs, lots of cows, lots of deer. I'm probably going to lean, you know, it also depends on range. I'm probably going to lean heavier towards the six arc. If I'm just going to be shooting all long range, all thousand yards plus, might be looking at a bolt action six creep. If I'm going to be shooting all whitetail at, and I want to push, I like the long range challenge, I want to push it beyond 500 yards. I'm probably going to be looking at a six creep, at least an 18 inch. So it's all comes down to use case. And again, I, I'm a, I'm a major proponent of making lists of use case and uh, how much money you got to spend and others who might be shooting it and everything else. But if it comes down to the point, point of contention is I have a lot more pigs than anything and I might get into thermal hunting. It's hundred percent going to be a AR 15, six arc. Even if AR 10, six Creed is on the table, I'm still going to reach for the six arc. I don't, particularly care for AR-10s that much and especially on like 6.5 Creed, 6 Creed, 22 Creed. Like I just I don't know. It just when you shoot them it feels like some bitch going to fall apart. <laughs> you know, even the most highest quality AR-10s. I don't AR-10s tend to be super heavy compared to like you can get a bolt action 6 Creed a lot lighter than you can an AR-10 most most scenarios. I don't know if if it's if it's going to be a semi-auto platform. Hundred percent, I'm going six hard. And barrel length, this kind of falls underneath that use case scenario. Like, am I running suppressed? My, what length suppressor am I running? Am I trying to keep it down to a certain length platform? 
because I want to use it in my ranch truck and I want to use a deer stand and stuff like that. Like I'm probably going six arc. Anything below 18 inches, I'm going six arc. Anything 18 inches longer, I'll probably go six cream. And that's just like kind of where I see the most amount of benefits from my end based off those barrel lengths. So 18 inches and down, I really like six arc. It's cartridge case capacity, and especially if you hand load, and you can tweak those. They use different powders that are faster burning in the shorter barrels. That six arc really performs very well out of short barrel platforms. Whereas six creed, you know, you got somewhere around that 40 grain standpoint, and especially like the factory ammo is going to be loaded with powders that are better for, long, better for longer barrels. I seen my best performance, me personally, through lots of loading and shooting factory ammos, 18 inches longer. And like an 18 inch six creed is pretty salty. Anything lower than that, it kind of gets like, it's kind of like, meh, you, you know, you can try to run a little bit faster burning powders if you hand load, but you're going to start getting a pretty good void between the projectile and powder. And that's a whole nother debate for another day, whether that matters or not. I'm just saying, if you're looking at a short barreled platform, bolt action or AR, I really like the six arc because of that cartridge case capacity and the case case design and everything else. But if you're going to be sitting in a deer stand shooting hundred yards, it doesn't matter. Six arc is going to be fine. 200 yards, six arc is going to be fine. An argument could be made 300 yards. Six arcs, just fine. It all depends on use case scenario, you know, what availability looks like, barrel length, and everything else. Again, if I'm wanting a semi auto platform, six arc all day. If I want a 18 inch or longer bolt action platform, six great all day. Or if I want to be able to push my limits of ethically smoking shit beyond 500 yards, I'm going six great. And in fact, that's what they use my six creeds for nowadays. So, Weight, again, touching back on weight again, use case, weight, and everything else. If I'm building a ultralight hunting platform that's going to be for a couple hundred yards in the end, and, and if I'm okay with using a six millimeter projectile, like if the game I'm chasing, the uh, weight, grain weight projectile range is like, you know, it's 112 and down. If I feel it's adequate for the job, I would look at the six arc because it's going to be a significant weight reduction by the time it's all said and done. If we're really looking for that lightweight setup, and the same thing goes for the semi-auto platforms, AR-15 is going to be much lighter than AR-10. So, <clears throat> I mean, I think the last little category here would be cost. Clearly, well, it should be cheaper to shoot a six arc. Probably depends on where you look at ammo. It's literally 10 grains less powder, brass a little bit smaller. Now, availability of stuff and uh, all that's going to come, in, come into effect nowadays. But it should be cheaper to shoot six arc. Now, whether whether that's reflected in the current market or not is a total different story. But especially if you're reloading, ten, I'm telling you right now, ten grains of powder adds up uh, substantially if you shoot a lot, like from a PRS standpoint or you know uh, heavy hunting recreational shooters such as myself and all that stuff. Like ten grains of powder, that's ten grains of powder. You know, three cartridges. That's I'm loading one more. You know, but. I mean, that's pretty much all I got for all that. I hope I didn't cover it too fast. Yeah, you're fine. But it's it's pretty, I mean, covered it pretty thorough. Like, we touched on all the little bases. And if you have questions, you can obviously drop them down below. But if the answer to the questions in the podcast, I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> it's, like, that's my, one of my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> I'm just going around here for a minute. As if, like, literally answered the question you're asking thoroughly in the podcast. You just don't want to go back and listen to it. I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> just, I'm just not going to. Now, 
uh, as it pertains to like this particular scenario, one of the one of the biggest asked questions I get the most is, you know, I don't know how still to this point, but it is, is six arc enough for a deer? Absolutely. Uh, we've done it a bunch of times. Lots and lots of people are adopting six arc for a deer hunting cartridge. Uh, I've, we've killed multiple at this point with the 14, five, six arc. Uh, I want so bad. I just, I just need to order it, I guess. Uh, it's an Elf Owl 12 and a half inch bolt action six arc. Because with the, the, um, the velocities you can achieve out of the bolt action in a 12.5, that would be a salty, badass little like deer stand rifle. Just my opinion. So the answer to your question is yes. And I, I refer to this story every time we bring this up. Neil Guy, uh, me and Jonathan built several six arcs back two years ago, whatever it was. One of the gentlemen that we built one for, they went out directly after that and killed a new guy with one. Uh, and, you know, I that this question posed to me the other day, would I shoot an elk with one? This might trigger a few folks, but absolutely. Now, I probably wouldn't push it beyond 200 yards, and I would probably use a little bit heavier constructed bullet, and I would practice, 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 making the perfect shot where it matters, and I would go from there. Now, am I going to recommend anyone else do this? No. Uh, you know your own limits. Do what you think is necessary. I mean, but for a whitetail pig, coyote, you know, any of that whitetail size gaming down, all the way, I, I'd probably push it to a mule deer, depending on the range. Like some of these mule deer get pretty huge, but whitetail size for sure, whitetail size game and down for sure, 100%. Like I'd recommend it all day long, especially for youth. Six R, great cartridge. Six grade, another great cartridge. Just different use cases. You know, if you'd like to shoot shit a little bit further, go with the six grade. If you'd like to keep it within typical deer hunting distances, six R is going to be just fine. And there's getting to be a lot more bolt action options available out there on the market in the six arc. But there's already, actually, John may be able to back me up on this, Phil. Stop going to sleep over there. <laughs> right now, I think there's more six arc bolt action options than there is six creep. Ooh, that wouldn't surprise me. I can look check Cause, right you know, Because Savage jumped on it. Howard jumped on it. And I don't think Howard's making a six creep unless they started. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's very strange. Like, There's a lot more options. Bolt. I believe there's a lot more bolt gun Especially from like a lower cost to higher cost. There's a lot more options for the six arc than there is six crate, which is interesting. Uh, there's definitely options for both. The strangest thing is Ruger. Ruger makes, Ruger jumped on six creed very quick after they released that cartridge. Ruger literally makes almost everything. Six, five Grendel. You know, 76239, like 450 bush match, which I see why those, but but they haven't jumped on a six arc bandwagon. I wonder if it's a magazine issue. That's, what, That's I, all I can think. Well, I mean, they have the 65 Grendel magazine. I don't know, Ruger, what, maybe we should do a what the fuck Ruger video. <laughs> I don't know. It, it seems to me currently, especially from budget up to high, high dollar. There's more options for the six arc than there is six grade. This pertains to bolt action rifles. And there's a hundred percent more options for AR platforms in six arc than there is six grade. Like I don't I can't tell you last time I seen a semi auto six grade. Whereas six arc, like a lot of people are making them. So you know, let us down below what you think. Let us know down below what you're shooting, what you're shooting shooting in it like as far as ammo and what you're shooting with it like coyotes uh pigs deer let us know down below i don't know what do you think john what would you choose why not both that's what i'm saying <laughs> I, have, I have a bunch of both <laughs> yeah i'm definitely going and this is my hard stance semi-auto platform six arc all the way all the live long day Bolt action, 18 inch longer, six grade. I'll uh -huh. live long day. It's like, I don't know. 
an 18 inch six creed will do a lot for hunting purposes like a lot more than what people realize but like that that 18 16 14 and a half all the way to 12 and a half in a semi-auto platform six heart will do a lot too it comes down to like efficiency of the efficiency of the projectile and everything else like it carries energy much further and it, it all comes down to use case uh I would assume ammo availability for a lot of people. But anyways, that's pretty much all I have for this one. Uh, John, do you have any final announcements? <laughs> oh, geez. No, Jeffrey Dahmer, do you have any final announcements? <laughs> for those that can't see him, I don't know if you'll ever get to see John. He has Jeffrey Dahmer glasses now, and it's kind of creepy. It's great. <laughs> And they're, they're blue blockers. You keep your, your corporate light away from these eyes, son. <laughs> no, I'm good. Uh, once again, be sure and go check out alleymunitions.com. Or if you're Midland, Midland. 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 Go to Alley Outdoors. We appreciate y'all. Let us know in the comments down below if there's any topics you want us to cover. I'm not going to cover too much more on 22 Arc until we have some of the stuff in our hands, and that's probably going to be until January, so just calm down. I'm sorry. I'm just not one of those people that's going to make up a bunch of bullshit. Uh, we appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you guys next time.